Concerned citizens and anti-nuclear activists have been waiting for months for answers, and yesterday they crowded into a San Juan Capistrano community center to hear from power officials why hundreds of steam generator tubes were so badly damaged in so short a time frame. And they wanted to know who's to blame. How is it that 39 design changes did not trigger a complete review by the NRC and complete public hearings as re is required by law? Has the law been broken by either California Edison, Mitsubishi, or the NRC? And that video comes to us courtesy of Patch.com San Clemente. Joining me are KPBS senior metro reporter Allison St. John and Murray Jennings, associate professor at SDSU School of Business and former employee of the San Onofre Nuclear Power Station. Thank you both for being here. Now, Allison, I want to get to the question that we just heard, mm. but before we do that, who was at the meeting and, and why were they at this meeting? There were hundreds of people there. I think most of the ones that uh, I spoke to were from the vicinity, people who live within 10, 20 miles of San Onofre and who were genuinely anxious about their own safety. Now, now Murray, remind us too why this plant has been shut down since January. Well, the U-tubes in the steam generator are used to transfer heat from the primary coolant around a reactor to make steam to run the turbine. Uh, when you get a leak in one, it allows coolant that comes directly off the reactor to get out into the environment. So that triggered a, a small radiation release which shut down the plant. So it's, it's hundreds of these tubes that, that had unusual wear and were leaking. Well, it was one that caused the initial okay. uh, um, alarm. When they started doing the investigation, they found that there were a lot, uh, up to hundreds, that were impacted and had excessive wear and would have failed later. Okay, so Allison, now let's go back to the big question. First of all, do we know, do, do they now know why this happened? They seem to be both Edison, because Edison was also there, and the NRC. They seem to be pretty clear as to why it happened. What they're not clear about is how to fix it. So that's the big question now. And what was new, certainly for me, coming out of this meeting was um, we've heard from uh, people like Arnie Gunderson of Friends of the Earth that perhaps the new design, you know, had caused some rattling, and that's why the tubes were prematurely wearing. Um, what the NRC really was clear about last night was that the simulation model that uh, Mitsubishi, who made the, the generators, used to predict whether this new design would work was way off, not just by a factor of one or two, but by three or four as to the thermal velocity, which is the, the heat and the pressure in the water around the tubes. So there was a mistake in those computer codes, and that prediction, therefore, meant that they were completely caught by surprise when this uh, premature wear occurred. You talk about design change. So that there was these are new steam generators, and whose idea was it? Was it the power company? Was it the, the maker of these STEM generators to say, let's make a design change and that ultimately resulted in this error? Well, actually, there's still debate as to whether it's a design change. Uh, it's a steam generator going in to replace a steam generator. It still functions the same way. The, uh, when you start talking design change, in a nuclear world, that has a little different meaning than just what we would consider a design change. So well, as long as... Uh, can yeah. I just say that one of the people who asked a question at the meeting, Gene Stone, said there were 39 design changes and at least one or two of them should have triggered a review, so... A review by NRC. Right. Regulators. Well, again, that's what they're investigating to see if that would really be the case. Uh, when you look at a design change, that's something that changes the way the plant reacts to its safety analysis and, and design basis uh, assumptions. So it isn't necessarily clear that anything they did was a design change. It might Well, they be. did something, though. They did something that was different than what was there before, right. which is why we have this problem. Right. It's a new steam generator that has flow going through it a little differently than the old steam generator. Has more tubes. More tubes. Fewer well, supports. Well, more tubes, fewer supports, because the analysis they used showed that that would be okay. Now, but the analysis was incorrect. That's right. The that's the real issue. And that's, to me, that's actually kind of a good thing to find is that there was a, a, a design code issue in the software that uh, had there been a manufacturing error or other issues, you probably would not have been able to reuse those steam generators. But, but this, had, had they gone because, through the process and said, we're making a design change, wouldn't a regulator, wouldn't NRC have caught that error in the code? Isn't that, what, isn't that well, why we have this problem to begin with? They go through a process to say, we're making a change. We have to analyze this change to see if it's truly a, a change to our design basis. And if it is, then it has to go to the NRC for their approval. If it isn't, and we can prove that in our documentation and in our analysis, 
then they still get it, but just not as fast. So, Allison, the, the, the question um, that was posed uh, before we, we began this discussion, um, is anybody, who's responsible and are they liable? Well, that was, that was the question that, uh, that we saw at the beginning, is has someone done something illegal here? And what was interesting was that the regional administrator for the NRC, who was kind of leading the meeting, Elmo Collins, pretty much said, you know, that is a really good question. He said, you're right on the money with that question, and it's a question we are asking ourselves. And we're still looking at that, and we don't have a conclusion yet. Now, of course, you know, you can't expect an agency to investigate itself. So um, right as of now, Barbara Boxer has a Senate committee, the uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, that is looking into all this and has requested thousands of documents from both the NRC and Edison. And they're in the process of looking at that. And I called to find out the, where we're at with that. They said, we're, we're still in the middle of it, and we don't have any timeline as to when we will reach any conclusions as to who is at fault. Marie, we're running out of time, but I know you used to work there, and you mentioned that right now you've got probably got a lot of worried engineers. What are they doing right now? Well, they're documenting what they did. It isn't necessarily did somebody do something illegal. It's did they do what they should have done? Were they behaving in a reasonable manner? Did they make reasonable decisions? And all the engineers involved in this process will be held accountable for that, and they will have to show that they did what they were supposed to do, that when they reviewed something, they reviewed it uh, correctly and adequately. And that when they signed for something, their signature represents that they did exactly that. So they're backing up to prove that that's exactly what they've done. We're going to have to leave it there. But we will continue to follow the story. Of course, there's the issue of who's going to pay for this mistake now. So we'll be anxious to hear about that. Murray Jennings, Allison St. John, thank you both so much. Thank you.